Hi everyone. Okay, today we're going to be looking at the causes of the Spanish Armada. So we'll start by looking at what actually an Armada is, if you've never heard of it. Um, and then we'll have a look at the short and the long term causes of the Armada. Um, and then we'll have a little bit of a talk about the outcome, but um, that will be in the next couple of videos. We'll have a look at the um, actual Armada itself. So if we have a look, first of all, at what an armada actually is, if you aren't familiar with the term, an armada is a fleet of boats, okay, that, um, and it's a battle on the sea. So we can see here, this is just a, a, a portrait of the Spanish armada. We can see that we've got one side and the other side, and it's a big battle um, in the middle of the ocean. This was actually fought in the English Channel, but again, I'll go into more detail about the events of the Armada in the next couple of videos. So in this one, we're just going to be having a look at what, why the Armada happened, why England and Spain were at war, what was the context, what was going on at the time. So England at this point didn't really have an empire. We, we hear about the British Empire and we know um, there's a famous saying that says the sun never set on the British Empire. Um, it covered a third of the globe at one point, but in the 1500s, we're really just starting to explore. OK, so we've got um, a few explorers, Francis Drake, John Harkins, um, Walter Raleigh, who were going over to the Americas in particular, and they are um, trying to establish colonies there. Uh, but the British Empire really isn't, um, hasn't really taken off during this time. However, Spain's empire is much, much bigger. So it was the 1400s when Spain went over to South America. So that's why North America at the moment is um, English and South America is Spanish because the Spanish conquered South America first. So Philip actually at this point has the big, largest empire in the world. He is one of the richest men in the world and he has every intention of taking over England and adding us to his empire. So a bit of background about Elizabeth and Philip though, he doesn't just decide one day, oh, I'm just gonna go and take over England. Um, there is a history there. So Philip had been married to Catholic, um, let's have a, a highlighter here. Philip had been married to Catholic Mary Tudor with the intention of uniting the Catholic world. OK, so Mary Tudor was Elizabeth's sister. So he had been married to Elizabeth's sister and they wanted he was uniting the Catholic world. So Mary was a Catholic, Philip was a Catholic and he wanted to unite them together. So when even before Mary had died, Philip made it clear that he wanted to marry Elizabeth. Okay, so Mary was very ill. She actually had cancer and it was clear she was going to die. So Philip proposed to Elizabeth and said, will you unite with me? We will carry on our great alliance. Um, we will produce an heir. However, the problem here was that Elizabeth was not a Catholic. Elizabeth was a Protestant and also had no intention of marrying. So they have no children together and Elizabeth becomes queen. Philip quickly proposed to Elizabeth. Now, one of my favourite things about Elizabeth is how she uses herself as a, as a tool. Um, she doesn't say no, she just keeps him waiting for a while. She does, she's like, I'll think about it, I'll come back to you. There are several years of peace, but at the end of the day, we've got a Catholic country, we've got a Protestant country, we've got two countries trying to expand their empire this peace would not last for very long. And it comes to a head in 1588. So let's have a look at um, a few reasons why this happened. So a little bit of context about the Netherlands as well, because this, this is a massive reason. This is like an in-between, something that really sets them off against each other. So Philip was also the king of the Netherlands where there was a Protestant uprising in August, 1566. OK, so he's also the king of the Netherlands because the Netherlands is part of his empire. OK, so some Protestants were not happy with having a Catholic run in their country and they say, look, we don't want this anymore. We're going to riot against you. 
So they have um, Catholic icons are being smashed. There's rioting. Philip was ruthless and sent in Spanish soldiers to restore order. So all of this kerfuffle is happening. Philip sends in an army and basically tries to put down the Protestant uprising. He basically says, we are Catholic. You and your religion are not welcome. We're going to send our soldiers in after you. So Elizabeth sends money to the rebels. So the rebels are the Protestants. She helps them. She sends them money. And she says to English Protestants, if you want to go and help them against Philip, then you go and help them. And she also allows a rebel ship. So again, where we say rebel here, we're talking about the Protestants to stay protected in an English port until 1572. And this all greatly angered Philip. Now, this is indirect. This is not Elizabeth outright saying we are going to war with Spain, but it is Elizabeth helping somebody that Philip is trying to get under control. OK, so Philip is Catholic. Elizabeth is Protestant. Philip's trying to restore Catholicism to make sure that the Netherlands stay Catholic and Elizabeth is helping the people who are rebelling against him. Now, if you were Philip, you could see this as an act of war by Elizabeth. So he does get very annoyed about this. So that's what's going on in the Netherlands at the time. Elizabeth is helping the Protestants against Philip. England and Spain aren't exactly at war at this point. So let's have a look at some more of the causes. So this is the one that we've just done. We've, have a, we've seen here in 1566, the Dutch Protestants. We've got very, very simply, like we've just said, Spain is Catholic and England is Protestant. They are two different religions who are against each other at this in this period in history. OK, and that is very, very simple. Philip wanted to unite them both. He wanted to say, look, you keep England Protestant, we'll get married and we'll live happily ever after. But Elizabeth wasn't having that because she is very independent and she is a Protestant. So we've got one very simple reason there. We've got our um, Dutch Protestants in the Netherlands. Then we've got the 1570 Papal Bull. Now I've talked about this in a previous video when we looked at religion and how that was a problem for Elizabeth. So this calls for Catholics to overthrow Elizabeth. Now, if we go back here, Spain is Catholic. So the Pope has said to the Catholics, you go and take over Elizabeth, you go and conquer her kingdom. OK, so Spain supports plots against Elizabeth. So we've got tension again there. So here in the um, Netherlands, Elizabeth is against Philip. Here, Philip is against Elizabeth. He's saying, right, if you're not going to join me, then I'm going to do what the Pope says and I'm going to help people overthrow you. OK, and then we've got finally on this side, Drake and other Spanish sailors. So Francis Drake raiding Spanish ships and ports in the New World. Now, the New World is what we now know as the Americas. And Francis Drake is a pirate or a privateer. And he sees these ships um, in a port called Cadiz and they are full of gold and he just goes and nicks it and takes it back to Elizabeth. So that makes Philip angry as well. So we can see with these four things, just all this tension bubbling up and, and things that one of them's doing against the other one. And that's leading to this conflict. OK, short term, um, short term causes. 1584, we've got the Dutch leader, William of Orange, was assassinated. The Spanish are now winning in the Netherlands. So the Catholics are winning. Remember up here when we talked about how Elizabeth supported the Protestants. She now wants to help them even more because her friend is being assassinated. And in 1585, Elizabeth sends 7,000 English soldiers to help the Dutch rebels. Now, remember, our rebels are our Protestants. So we're against um Philip it didn't achieve much but it is an open act of war so this is like the last straw this is Philip saying look you have now sent soldiers against my um people I am now going to make sure that you pay for that 
Now, something else that I want to add that isn't actually on this diagram, but in 1587, Elizabeth beheads Mary, Queen of Scots. Now, again, if you go back to the plots video, I talk about Mary, Queen of Scots quite a lot. Mary, Queen of Scots is a Catholic. She's a Catholic queen and she is also um, Elizabeth's cousin. She's Elizabeth's cousin and she is also, um, sorry, she's a Catholic queen. She's Elizabeth's cousin and she is the center of quite a few plots to overthrow Elizabeth. Okay, so she has a lot of power in that people see her as an alternative to Elizabeth. So Elizabeth gets rid of her because she proves that she's trying to overthrow Elizabeth. She, she beheads her, but by beheading a queen, Elizabeth is basically saying that she doesn't believe that royals have the protection of each other. So Philip, along with this, the 1570 papal bull, where the Pope says basically to all the Catholics, you feel free to go and kill Elizabeth. She has now in 1587 killed a queen herself. So Philip thinks, well, there's absolutely no reason now why I should protect you. And that leads to in 1588, the um, attempted invasion of England by the Spanish. Okay, now this, this word here is important. We say attempted because they don't actually ever make it onto English soil. The whole thing is thought is fought at sea. Um, so to sum up, it's we've got quite a few um, reasons here that we can put them into categories. We've got personal. Definitely some of our motives here are personal. We've got personal reasons for Philip to go and attack. Elizabeth, we've definitely got political, okay, with the, um, the conflict in the Netherlands, we've got religious, with one of the countries being Protestant and the other one being Catholic. So there are a lot of reasons and this tension is bubbling for quite a while, basically from the time that Elizabeth comes to the throne in um, 1558. It's 30 years before this conflict actually happens, but it's bubbling away in the background all the time. There's lots going on that feed into it. And then finally, 30 years after Elizabeth refuses to marry Philip, he launches an attack on the English. Now I did say that we'd talk briefly about what happens in the Armada but I will cover that in more detail in the next video. Um, the Spanish, spoiler alert, the Spanish actually lose which is um, a massive massive shock because of the numbers of both sides. It's expected that the Spanish will win but there are a number of factors that lead to the Spanish defeat. One being poor leadership, one being um, the weather, the weather was actually on England side, the currents, there's loads of different reasons why um, the Spanish lose the Armada, very, very interesting. There's also a brilliant, brilliant documentary on the Spanish Armada that's called 12 Days to Save England, that's by um, a historian called Dan Snow. So if you are interested in more interested in it, then I would recommend going away and watching that. Okay, so hopefully you'll join me in the next couple of videos where we talk about the um, the Armada itself. It's very, very interesting, very fast paced battle, loads of reasons why it goes wrong for the Spanish. Um, hopefully you've gained a good an overview there of, of why it happened and I will see you in the next few videos where we'll have a look at the Armada itself. Thanks everyone.